Hey, this is Presh Talwalker. Solve for the value of the following three sums. The first sum is 1 divided by 1 times 3, plus 1 divided by 3 times 5, plus 1 divided by 5 times 7, plus 1 divided by 7 times 9, plus 1 divided by 9 times 11. The second sum is 1 divided by 4 times 7, plus 1 divided by 7 times 10, plus 1 divided by 10 times 13, plus 1 divided by 13 times 16. The third sum is an infinite series. 1 divided by 2 times 7, plus 1 divided by 7 times 12, plus 1 divided by 12 times 17, plus 1 divided by 17 times 22, and so on. I saw a mind-blowing trick via Study IQ Maths on how to solve these types of problems extremely quickly in your head. I want to share the solution to these problems and I want to show a proof of why this technique works. Pause the video if you'd like to give these problems a try and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve these problems. I will first present solutions to these problems, and then I will give a proof of why the technique works. Let's get started with the first problem. So how do we solve this sum very quickly? First, count the number of terms in the sum. There are five terms. That's the numerator of the answer. We then divide by the following product. We take the very first number in the first fraction, that's one, and we multiply it by the very last number in the last fraction. That's 11. 5 divided by 1 times 11. 1 times 11 is equal to 11. So the answer is 5 over 11. And that's it. Wow. Let's use this technique to solve the second problem. In this example, we count the number of terms in the sum. There are four terms in the sum. We then want to divide this by the very first factor in the denominator, that's 4, and we multiply this by the very last factor in the last fraction, that's 16. So we have 4 divided by 4 times 16. We cancel out the 4s, and we get this is equal to 1 over 16. And that's the answer to this sum. Now how do we solve for an infinite series? We can't count the number of terms because the number of terms is infinite. But there's a similar way to solve this problem very quickly. The numerator is equal to 1. We then divide by the very first factor in the first fraction, so that's 2. Then we look at the difference between the two factors. So 2 to 7, we want to add 5 here. So we take 2 in the denominator and multiply it by 5. So 1 divided by 2 times 5, that's equal to 1 over 10. And that's the answer to the infinite series. I was so amazed by this trick. The question to me though is how does it work? So now let's do a proof of why this technique works. We start out with a general pattern for all of these sums. So here is the finite sum of n terms. Each term in the sum has the form 1 divided by k multiplied by k plus d. So what we're going to do is we're going to analyze each term in this sum. To do that, we'll use a partial fraction decomposition. This fraction will be equal to some number p over k plus some number q divided by k plus d. We'll bring the k multiplied by k plus d to the other side. Then we will distribute. In the first term, the k's will cancel. In the second term, we have k plus d canceling out. We now will distribute the p term, and then we will group like terms. We will factor k. On the left-hand side, we have 1, 
and that's equal to 1 plus k times 0. We can now equate coefficients. We have 1 is equal to p multiplied by d. This means p is equal to 1 over d. Then we have p plus q is equal to 0. We just solved that p is equal to 1 over d, so that means q is equal to negative 1 over d. We now can solve for the partial fraction decomposition. p is equal to 1 over d, and q is equal to negative 1 over d. We'll just move this negative sign to the second term over here. So we have the partial fraction decomposition that this is equal to 1 over d divided by k minus 1 over d divided by k plus d. We will use this formula on each term in this sum. So let's apply it on the first term. Here, k is equal to a. So the partial sum, we applied this formula. Then we will apply it to the second term. Now in this, k is equal to a plus d. So we apply the formula, and we'll keep doing this for every single term in this sum. We get an interesting pattern here. In particular, the second and third terms will cancel out. Then the fourth and fifth terms will cancel out. And this pattern will continue to the penultimate term. So only the very first term and the very last term will survive. So the partial sum will be equal to the following. And I want to mention this is an example of something interesting. When you have a sum where only the very beginning and the very end survive, that's reminiscent of a telescope that retracts upon itself. For this reason, this is known as a telescoping sum. So we figured out the partial sum is equal to 1 over d divided by a minus 1 over d divided by a plus nd. We now need to simplify this. We'll move the d terms to the denominator. Then we will get a common denominator. We can simplify the numerator. This will be equal to nd. Then we have a d factor in the numerator and the denominator, so the d's will cancel out. So the partial sum is equal to n divided by a multiplied by the factor a plus nd. And this is exactly the formula we want. n is the numerator, that's the number of terms in the sum. Then a is exactly that very first factor, and then a plus nd is the very last factor, you know, the largest number in this sum. So that's it. That's why this formula works. Now what about the infinite series? In that case, we want to take the limit as n approaches infinity of the partial sum. So let's rewrite the partial sum by distributing in the denominator. Then we take a look as n goes to infinity. So we'll focus on just the n terms. Now n over n will cancel out in a way. So we have 1 over ad. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the partial sum will be equal to 1 divided by a multiplied by d. Now a is exactly this first factor in the first denominator, and then d is the difference between these two terms. a plus d minus a is equal to d. And that's a proof of the infinite series formula. This is a wonderful formula that not everyone knows, so if you see it on an exam or a competition, you'll have the edge to solve it very quickly in your head. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.